So, you want to have a NASA rocket launch in your shop, but you don't have the budget to have a NASA rocket launch in your shot. <laughs> then it's a good thing that you hit this video because today we're looking at how to comp in a rocket launch in our shop, all with an After Effects, and that means no paid assets and no outside plugins, starting right now. Before we get into this tutorial, I just want to say that this shot comes from a trailer that I edited for a short film called Prepare to Launch. Link is in the description. Go check it out. It's pretty sick, pretty dope. So in After Effects, we have our four second clip of our talent looking at the rocket launch. And what's important about this shot and something to keep in mind is that it is on a tripod, so it's stable. Even with it being on a tripod though, there is still a little bit of shake to it, probably just from the wind or the wind. Also, you can see we have a very sharp horizon that we're working with. And so that's going to make it easier to apply this effect. And to our shot, we're not dealing with foliage. Imagine if this grass and everything was growing in front of the horizon, then we're having to deal with that, with rotoscoping that and putting in the foreground. We're not dealing with that. So when you're doing this type of shot or anything that you're comping in, keep those in mind, what's gonna save you time in the edit. The footage that we'll be using comes from NASA's archive footage, which is uh, this footage right here of a uh, NASA space launch. And this angle right here is what we'll be using to to pull out the elements we want for our rocket launch and then comp it into our own footage. And so what we wanna do is we wanna bring this shot into our own composition and then trim down the clip so we're left just with this wide shot right here of the rocket taking off. Go ahead and rename this composition to Rocket Dust since that's the element we'll be pulling out of it. And the first thing that we wanna do is is we want to stabilize the scale, position, and rotation of the shot. You can see that in this shot, we're having this uh, zoom out as the rocket is taking off, which means if we pull out the dust element from the shot, it's actually going to be shrinking and we don't want that. So if we select our clip, go to stabilize motion over here in our tracking window, we can then select, you can see position is checked. We wanna check rotation and scale. And we do that, you'll see that you get two tracking points instead of one. We wanna take one tracking point. Let's go ahead down to these little bushes down here. I think this little spot right here is perfect for a tracking point. And then for the second point, let us go ahead and move it to the corner of this roof right over here. It's important when you're doing these two tracking points to get nice contrast solid edges that are also uh, a good distance from each other. If they're super close to each other, the software might not be able to read well enough how the shot is scaling up, scaling down or rotating. And once you have those points, go ahead and play through it. And once that's done, we can check the track points and we can see that they uh, tracked very nicely. So now let's just go and hit apply. And our shot now doesn't zoom out, but everything stays very static. You can see it's slightly jittery, but that's okay because we're gonna be scaling it down and it's not going to affect it. But this is a great element now to work with. So now we wanna right mouse click on our shot, go to uh, pre-compose, and then let's pre-compose it as stabilized rocket launch and then move all attributes to new composition, hit okay. And now to get this dust element in use, we want to use the roto brush to rotoscope all of it out or in. Now right mouse click, go to open, go to open layer, and then select our roto brush tool and let's start roto brushing around our dust. We don't have to worry too much about the bottom layer here, uh, making sure that the roto brush tool is capturing the dust perfectly there because when we put it into our shot, we'll be cutting it off with the horizon anyway. So it's just something to keep in mind. Once you have a nice uh, outline with your roto brush, we can just play through it and allow the software to do its thing. Once the roto brush is done going through, we can go through ourselves now and make sure that it caught everything well, and then take our reduced chatter, push it up to 100% and then select our motion blur to be on. And you can see in our composition, we are left with this solo element of the dust. Now we're going to solo out the jet fuel that is coming from the rocket. So we can take the composition of the stabilized rocket launch that we did earlier and then drag that down into a new comp. Let's right mouse click and rename that comp into rocket fuel. And we'll just create a mask around this jet fuel stream that's flowing out from our rocket and let's feather it to 25 and then hit M to bring up mask path, select the stopwatch to start keyframing. And then I like to change the add to none so we can see what we're working with. And now let's keyframe this mask frame by frame with our jet stream as the rocket begins to rise. And 
when you're done with that, we can see we get a nice isolated element of just the rocket fuel shooting out of the rocket. Okay, so now let's go back to our actual clip. And before we start adding in our elements, let's create a tracked null. So if we click the clip right here, go to our tracking window and click track motion. We can find a good tracking point, and I think a good one would be one of the corners of these buildings right there. Let's go ahead and track through. Once that's done, right mouse click on the composition, go to new and then null. Then go to edit target, make sure that we have the track for the target, hit OK, and then hit apply. So now let's bring our elements in that we've crafted. So first let's bring in the rocket dust, scale it down and move its position accordingly. And let's make sure we pick whip it to our track layer and then put our motion blur on for that. Now let's bring in our rocket fuel and again, move it accordingly, pick whip it to the track and put the motion blur on. So the next thing we wanna do is we want to actually add a rocket to our jet fuel right here that we have. Now the reason that we didn't keep the rocket in from the footage that we were using is that for this particular shot, it was in the 60s and we don't have uh, HD footage of a 60s rocket launching. So what we do is we get, you know, this HD footage that we already got from here and then we can take just an image that we have of an older rocket and we're going to mask this rocket out and then place it onto our jet fuel. And then with our rocket placed where we want it, right at the tip of uh, this jet fuel, we want to now keyframe the position of the rocket to follow the jet fuel stream as it rises. So if we hit P, select our stopwatch, and then we can go through and keyframe the position. And once you're done with that, let's make sure that we apply the motion blur to it. And now what we want to do is want to color correct all of our uh, elements that we've added in, because clearly there's too much contrast, too much saturation, maybe even too much warmth in our rocket right here. So what we want to do is we want to add Lumetri color to all three of them. If you go to uh, effect, color correction, Lumetri color. So we want to add that to all three, and then we want to adjust the basic correction, which is going to be our temperature, tint, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, and saturation. For all three of these, you're going to just differently adjust those until everything looks good for the actual clip that we are throwing them into. It may not sound professional, but it's really just about finicking with the numbers until you get a look that you like. So after color correcting it, we can see that our elements are now starting to fit way better into our image. Uh, but now what we want to do is, is we want to mask our elements to fit better in the horizon so it doesn't look like it's just images slapped on top of the image of the frame, the shot. So we're gonna take our rocket dust right here. If we uh, turn off the layer, we can see the horizon. We can select our mask tool and then we can just go about uh, creating a mask around the horizon right here. Turn your layer back on, select M and then turn the mask into subtract. Bring the mask feather to five. And now we'll have to keyframe a mask as well where our actor's pants jeans are crossing with the element that we're putting into the shot. So we can turn off the layer again so we can see underneath it. Put a mask around the pants, that looks good. Hit M on our layer, select the stopwatch for the mask path tool. We can turn our frame back on and let's make sure that the mask is set to subtract. And now we can just go frame by frame or a few frames ahead, doesn't have to be frame by frame and just adjust our mask so it sticks with our actor's jeans. You can see too, if I want to select all these uh, anchor points right here and adjust it, it's now moving the other mask that we created. So a way to avoid that is we can just go down here to our mask one that's labeled pink and then put the lock on it. So now if we select those anchor points, you can see it's only moving the mask we want to work with and we don't have to worry about messing up previous mask made. So when you're done with that, let's now mask out this little bottom area that's protruding from our jet fuel element. And what I wanna do actually is, I know previously I said, let's put the jet fuel element underneath the rocket dust, but let's bring it back on top actually, and let's create a mask that just cuts off this bottom portion right here. So let's change that mask to subtract instead of add and then feather it out to about 55. Set a keyframe for that feathering at the end of our clip, go back to the beginning, set the feathering to 20. And now what we have is this nice blend between our jet fuel and the dust that it's shooting up. Instead of what we had previously, if I put it underneath, we have this harsh line that's being made that just, I don't know, I don't like, it looks weird. Next we wanna do is add a Gaussian blur to all of our elements because since they are far into the distance, things wouldn't be as sharp as if they were just right in front of me. So if we just right mouse click, go to effect, go to blur, 
Gaussian blur. And then let's just add that to every single other element. And now let's add a lens flare. So what we can do is we can just use the lens flare that's available within After Effects. We can right mouse click on our composition, go to new adjustment layer. Then let's go right mouse click on that adjustment layer, go to effect generate, and then lens flare. Let's select the 105 prime lens flare. Let's drag that flare right to the base of our rocket. And then let's bring the brightness pretty far down. And now let's just keyframe the flare center along to stay with the base of our rocket. And when that is done, you can see that we have this nice lens flare that is really adding to the element as if it's really overexposing the uh, camera from the jet fuel. Now, the last thing that I like to do is I like to select all of our clips and then pre-compose. Let's make it just final rocket launch. Why do I put underscore so much? I don't know, it just happens. And then this is just something a little extra that I like to do, but it adds a nice little texture to it. If we scale it up, just by 103, just a little bit, and then select P to bring up our position. Click the stopwatch while holding down Alt so we can bring up our expressions menu for the layer. We can type in wiggle, parentheses three comma five, and then let's make sure that we set our motion blur on. And what this is going to do is just give a nice little handheld field. You don't have to add this in. I like to use this on elements that I know we had to put on a tripod to film, but then when you actually see it in the final touches, it may look like it wasn't on tripod, but slightly handheld. But if you don't want that, that's fine. That's just a personal touch of mine. I don't do it every time, but maybe I, I, I could. Anyway, that's all there is to know with this effect. I think it's a very good effect to learn, especially when you're trying to understand comping and better understand how to uh, basically take uh, random footage and clips and images and use that for crafting your own effects and your shots instead of just looking for assets and, and, and downloadable content to pay for online. Uh, you could just find some free archive footage and create your own effect. So obviously there are limitations to this effect. So make sure that you're smart with it. Make sure you use your noggin. You can also use your noggin to like, subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any uploads that I got coming your way involving tutorials within After Effects and Premiere within indie filmmaking and TikTok content in general. Those are two very different uh, niches, but you know what? We're doing it anyway. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.